Oh Rob, I was just speaking to the cameraman there and he was asking all about these bikes. <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing here? Where are we? We're at Newlands Corner. In Surrey? In Surrey. It's a lovely part of the world. It is really, really lovely. Even um, when it's raining a bit, which yeah. it is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's British summer. British well, summer time. British yeah, summer time. Exactly. And we're on the yeah, right bikes for it anyway. We're on the right, exactly the right bikes there for it. There is blue sky over there. Can you see it? Should we push the bikes over there then? I think it might take a day or so. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. We're here to have an adventure. We are. What type of adventure are we going to have, Rob? A very middle class adventure, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> we've got two pretty impressive motorbikes. We have. So what we've we got, got the BMW GS 1250 or 1250 GS. Cool people call that the clitoris bike, don't they? What, because every year, every, I get, I see where you're going with that, Al. We've got a GS, we've got a GS. Yeah, which we know is reliable. Uh huh. It's going to endure anything we can throw at it or throw it at. It's been, it's been around the block a while now, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's been a long while. It's been a long time in, uh, in coming, in, in evolution terms. It's, it's been right from the early, you know, 1100s to evolution. 1150 to... Yeah, nothing. Yeah, 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 so it's yeah. come on. It's, they know what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a GS, like most people in Surrey. What else have we got, Rob? Uh, a KTM 1290 just... Super Adventure S. Okay. Which is a long name for a... That is quite a pair of motorbikes actually isn't it? It is a hell of a pair of motorbikes. Big capacity, big twins. Yeah. Uh, the GS, I went on the launch of the GS Adventure, so I should know everything about this bike. Have you forgotten it all? I've... Or most of it? I'm getting very old. Uh, this <laughs> big news is the engine. Most of the bike is unchanged, essentially apart from the engine, which is now a 1250 from an 11, it was an 1170 before, and it was a 1253. Yeah, I think so. Something like that, yeah. 1247. Yeah. We'll check that later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so more capacity, more power, more torque. But it's also got a new variable valve system called Shift Cam, which is it's quite clever. Have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen some of the uh, animations of it, how it works. It is really, really clever. It's like a gearbox, actually, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, the, the, it's like the, the cams in a drum. Yeah. It puts pins out, slides cams along. Exactly. High speed cam, low speed cam. Bob's your uncle. So you've sort of got the benefit of like the old fashioned sort of two valve head engine, really, with the low revs where it's kind of. Torque, you know, torque, and low and down. High revs and and sort of a, bit of a, up a bit, bit so. of a screamer at the high yeah. end as well. So it's yeah. clever stuff. I mean, they use it on the S1000RR sports bike as well, don't they? Yes. Um, so it's, it's good technology that they've obviously been working on. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, to see it in an adventure bike is pretty cool, really, because a lot of these bikes do get ridden around town. Yeah. And then they'll get taken on an autobahn. So yeah. it's kind of a, a really good uh, way of making the character a little bit more flexible. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's only on the inlet cam. Uh, I, I was on the S1000 launch and I asked the man why it's not in the exhaust cam as well. And he says you don't, you don't need it, it in the exhaust cam. No. Uh, GS, so new engine for this year. Everything else is basically as you were. So you've got telelever front end, paralever shaft drive back end. Uh, lots of accessories. This one is not massively tricked up, it's got some good things. It's got keyless ignition, keyless ignition. It has got the, they've all got the TFT colour screen now. And uh, that's about it for this mod. This is, this is not massively spec. You can go to town with BMW yeah, and load it with all sorts of stuff, yeah. there. Of course, that, add, that adds to the price, doesn't it? So the base price is 13415 Um yeah. I don't know without checking what the actual equipment you get. I assume you get an engine. But it may be <laughs> yeah, a yeah, so you, you get, you get the, the base level ABS and traction control. You, you, don't you get hot grips? You know, you, you don't get tyre pressure monitors. I lost. I think this has got all of those things. So stuff like that. But um, it's still pretty good though that you can kind of make your bike your bike. Yeah, you know, exactly. You can kind of spec it to how you want it. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. change the paint. You can do all sorts of things yeah, with it. Yeah, so yeah. It's, uh, hey, well, one thing to watch is if you, if you try to sell a bike and it's not been spec with the common things, you can struggle a bit. You know, I've heard yeah. of people. Back in the old days, when it, you could opt, you could specify ABS. If you bought an old 1150 without ABS, it was almost unsellable. Mm. The, oh, in the or, I mean, the blue corner is the BMW from Bavaria. In yeah. the orange corner, what do we have? Is there an orange corner? Uh, there is today. It sounds like a sort of Muller yogurt, but um, <laughs> yeah. So corner, very healthy. There is, yeah, from Austria. Matty Coffin, is it Matty Coffin? Yes, it is. Matty it is. Coffin. I've forgotten where it was, but I knew it was Austria. Matty Coffin, yeah. So yeah. the thing with KTM, obviously, they've got a real heritage in off-road racing. When, when I was a boy, KTM didn't they make motorbikes, they made dirt bikes. Yeah. Yeah. And then they made that Duke, 620 Duke, was that the first, first road bike Yeah, kind I think of? it was, a sort yeah. of Supermoto style thing. It was yeah. good fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and here we yeah, are. They've been, they, they know how to make an off-road bike, that's the bottom line. So they know the geometry, they know... They start from a good place, don't they? Suspensions, so they know what's going to work yeah, off-road. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Obviously, they've learned a lot about on-road as well. Yeah. 
Now people like Jeremy Williams helping them develop mm. their bikes hasn't hurt. Yeah, yeah, he knows um, what he's doing. So really, this bike, in theory, mm -hmm. should be the best handling <laughs> on road and off road. <laughs> really, that's, yeah. that's what we're thinking. Okay. Uh, it's a twin, again, but it's a V-twin. V-twin, not a boxer twin, yeah. So that, that means it's narrower. I mean, this, this is a very wide bike. It is really wide, People yeah. don't like it for that reason, I think. But BMW's kind of stuck with a boxer for heritage reasons. Although off-road, like it can't fall over as far. That's a plus point. Yeah. Pro tip. Makes it easy to pick up. Pro tip, there yeah. you go. So the K, to my mind, the KTM is much higher performance. You know, it's got a V-twin engine, which is a super bike engine, essentially, isn't it? I mean, It is, really. It's, it's and, not um, far off what you get in a Ducati World Superbike. A couple of years well, ago, yeah, even a few years back, if you had a super bike with 160 horsepower, you were yeah. doing all right. This is 158, so it's not far off. Um, 140 newton meters of torque, I think it is. Um, well, that's actually got a bit more. What would what would Newton make? What would Isaac Newton make of these bikes at this point? <laughs> Do you think he'd be up for I'm it? I'm not sure. I think gravity still applies, so we've got to be careful. But true, um, true. But yeah, they are quite. They're in, they're impressive machines. I mean, they're big. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't believe how fast this is. Just to ride down the A3. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's ridiculous. I, I pulled away just to test the quick shifter. You understand? Yeah. And yeah. the front wheel came up. So I hit second gear. Front, front wheel came, came back up again. Yeah, Third yeah. gear. Front wheel came up. Um, it's, it's got a lot of horsepower. It's a really powerful motorbike, you know. Uh, more power than this, and it's faster than this, as we discovered in some roll-ons. Yeah, the roll-on test. Fourth, fifth, sixth gear. A sixth gear we were kind of holding on a bit longer, but yeah. essentially the KTM is faster. It's really got some grunt off the bottom. So you've got a, a mental engine and a, a sort of lightweight steel tube trellis chassis. Yeah. Yeah. And really good quality suspension on this as well. I mean, I know BMW done really well with the telelever paralever combo. Yeah. And I've ridden these bikes off road a lot. I used to work for BMW off road skills, and and, and it, it works surprisingly well. You know, you go there and think, God, this is going to be awful, but they actually do work incredibly uh -huh. well finding grip off road. Um, yeah. KTM have had a long association with um, WP. WP, and this bike's got some really good suspension in it. They yeah. own WP now, don't they? Uh, yes, I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Part of the same um, company. Which obviously makes sense, but yeah, really yeah. good quality suspension. Electronic suspension on that. Yeah. Electronic on this as well, actually. We've both got electronic suspension. It makes a lot of sense for a, an off-road, on-road bike with it long totally, travel. Yeah, and some of the controls you've got as well with the, obviously you can control the suspension to soften it up when you're off-road, but also you can like turn your ABS off. Yeah. You can adjust your traction control to do whatever. So yeah. you can really make it into an off-road bike. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, these bikes are on very road biased tires. Yeah. Um, but Continental do a tire called the TKC80, mm -hmm. uh, which you put them on a, on a, you know, bikes like these, you can go pretty much anywhere. It's a legendary tire, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. they're great yeah. tire. You can ride them on the road. They're a bit squirmy, but off-road mm -hmm. they are amazing. Mm -hmm. So, adventures is now officially over. We're back, back home for tea and tiffin, or coffee and- There's no tiffin going on coffee, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Coffee and no sorry, tiffin. Sorry if I led you on a bit, mate. There's Just no, coffee. There's no tiffin. I'm quite hungry, actually. Uh, yeah, we've, we've, um, we've had not a bad few days on these bikes, I would say. No, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. I mean, I've not ridden an adventure bike for quite a while. Yeah. And I've got to say, this is a super bike with an adventure bike frame. It's brilliant. You, you are the KTM man in this production, I think. So right, this thing, I'm yeah, completely, yeah. I, I want one of these now, it's brilliant. Uh, uh, you, I mean, your background is sort of racing, performance orientation, you know, so you are... Yeah, also off-road. And, and off-road yeah. skills as well, so th this is a kind of, it's, it's the perfect machine for you in some ways. It I kind think, of is, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, mm. KTM, obviously, big pedigree in off-road um, sport, and, mm -hmm. and, and this bike really sort of works off-road, even with the road tyres. Yeah. As long as it's dry, I mean, yeah. you can feel the geometry is okay, you can get into a few shapes and it'll sort yeah, itself yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas I found on the BMW, mm -hmm. it did feel a little bit kind of sketchy on road tyres off-road. Yeah, yeah. It just sort of wanted to load the front up and was, yeah. wasn't as precise. This was a lot more agile yeah. and precise through the rough stuff. We, we, we didn't do a lot of off-road. No. We did a local byway, we, we sort of pottered down Yeah, it was quite rutted yeah, down yeah. the bottom yeah, there. Yeah, and no, the yeah. rutted bit, you had to sort of pick your way yeah. across the rut and yeah. lift the front. And it, uh, that bike was better for it, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, just, just you felt more accurate with what you were doing with the bike, you mm, know. The yeah. BMW you could do it, it just mm. felt a bit more mushy and a bit more like you were trampling over the ground rather than you were, you know, accurately picking your way through stuff. It was yeah, just yeah. sort of smashing its way through a bit more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, we've called these adventure bikes, but these are the kind of 
the non-adventure versions, if you like. Yeah. We, we, we've got cast wheels, we, we don't have the big fuel tank and the adventure version on the BMW, certainly. Yeah. So uh, less sort of body work and, um, you know, th these are these are road bikes really, I think, aren't they? With yeah. an adventure clothing. Absolutely, they, they are, and I think they, mm. but they make a lot of sense. I mean, it's kind of like the old sort of Chelsea tractor thing, isn't it? With Range Rovers <laughs> and Land Rovers, you sort of see people driving around in them, you know, absolutely What are they doing? I'm mental. Thinking, you know, why are you doing that? But yeah. if this is the motorbike equivalent, it actually makes a lot of sense because yeah. you've got great road presence, yeah, yeah. you can see really well, they're really, really comfortable. Yep. Yeah. Um, massive wide bars and even in town i mean i did find the bmw to be honest a little bit wide in town yeah i was a bit conscious that it's a bit fat yeah whereas this uh the slow speed control is is unbelievable mm -hmm. you know you can be <clears throat> almost yeah. stopped keep your feet up and just it's got that narrow v twin engine isn't it so yeah, it's a, it starts yeah, yeah. from like a narrow base in terms of its foundation but, but the, uh, this probably isn't any wider at its widest point but it no, feet, there's more feet, it feels it, it feels it yeah wider than yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, slow speed control on this is amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, in town, it's kind of like you think you have to put your feet down and you don't. Mm. So if you are a bit short, which we both are a little yeah. bit, to be fair, yeah, yeah. you know, you're worried about having to have a bit of a dab because your legs are a bit mm -hmm. of a stretch, aren't they, when mm -hmm. you're sat on it? Yeah. Um, uh, neither of these bikes were too tall for me, actually. Uh, I've, I've been on the kind of off-road R version of these Super yeah. Avengers, too, 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 too tall. Yeah. But uh, th that was fine. You know, you could get, yeah, one, no, you the, get one foot done all the time. Yeah. Two tiptoes sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly that. But um, but no, really, really manageable for such a tall, kind of big bike. Mm -hmm. You know, even on, on slower roads, in traffic and stuff, they're not as... Yeah. They're not as unwieldy as you'd imagine. They're actually mm -hmm. quite quite agile, mm -hmm. um, which I was impressed with. Yeah, I mean, the other thing I really liked is, is the technology on, on both of them. I mean, the, we've got electronic suspension, yeah. we've got colour screens, we've got different riding modes, traction, ABS. You know, it's, it's just it's stuff that you think you would have to buy a fancy super bike to get. But yeah. but but these bikes have got it because these, these are the flagship models now. Yeah. You know, well, the, it's, it's no like it was back in the day of Honda. NL 750s and stuff like that. They, no, they, I mean, these are the fancy. Well, they are. I mean, the thing is, that the whole kind the of um, mm. move away from sports bikes to adventure bikes happened a few years ago, didn't it? Mm. Kind of as the, mm. as the sort of biker got older and all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I've got to say, I, I was always kind of thought they, you know, the manufacturers mm. wimped out a bit, even with naked bikes. They'd always, mm. you know, put a big engine in it, but oh, we'll detune it, we'll put softer cams in, we'll make it a bit. Yeah, I hate you know, that. We'll, as well. we'll flatten it off a Rubbish. bit. Rubbish. Yeah, yeah. They shouldn't. And, and I think KTM mm. have been pretty brave with this because. Mm. It doesn't feel like it's been kind of um, no. dumbed down at all. It's it's, it's a it's a it's fast. It's a fast bike. <laughs> I mean, you put it in sport mode, and it wants to pick the front end up everywhere. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. just it's just a fun, it's a super bike with an adventure chassis. I mean, when you look at the um, figures for <coughs> the Ducati 998. Yeah. Uh, a few years ago, similar horsepower, similar torque. If you were lucky, yeah, God, you know. yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Mm. So th this is a this is a super bike in an upright adventure chassis. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Hell of a thing to ride. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With comfy hand guards and adjustable windscreen. And yeah. A, a little pocket to put your phone in the side. Yeah, there. It's, exactly. It's, oh, it's Bluetooth a, connectivity. Yeah. You kind of get it Madness. when you when you, when you yeah. get you know when they give you all of this and give you all this horsepower mm -hmm. and a chassis that actually handles all right it's mm -hmm. kind of you understand why people like them yeah you yeah, know yeah. it's easy to sort of look at people on the venture bike and go oh here we go another another one of the ewan and charlie but no. actually they are really brilliant at what they do yeah yeah no, definitely yeah. Uh, the, 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 I, I really enjoyed the bmw's technology it's just got this this twist grip it just makes it so much easier to access the stuff you want to change the menu button and the, this like, little controller wheel you know uh, takes a bit to get into to start yeah. with, but once you work out all the ins and outs, you know, just easy. Yeah. You know, in the past, bikes had sort of functions like this, and you had to get through buttons on the dashboard, yeah. and oh, it's you know, yeah. nonsense, but just easy to use. Adjustable screen is a manual one, which is, you know, simple, straightforward, easy to use as well. And it's just the keyless ignition's there. We, we've got used to that now, haven't we? Yeah, that took a little while. Mm. Um, mm. But yeah, you do get used to it. And, and like you say, with the um, with the menus now, they're, they're so easy. I mean, I think the KTM is maybe a bit easier than the yeah. BMW. I don't yeah. know, but it seems more intuitive anyway. Yeah, I, th um, I think the BMW maybe has more things hidden within it. Yeah, and, and you need to hunt down a bit. A bit but once but then, you do then no one owns their bike for a week, do they? Only no. a bit longer than that, so you get used to it, and it's it's uh, it's quite user friendly, really. Maybe people read the manual as well. Yeah, do you read the manual? No, so no. It says, there's a sticker that says read the manual before you. Man, ah, that's probably going wrong all these years. <laughs> it says carefully as well. Read the owner's manual carefully. No, don't just, don't read, just it. read it. No, no, read it carefully. No, no flipping and skimming here. No, no, exactly. None of that. <laughs> oh, I'm just looking at the pictures. Oh, you'll die then. 
<laughs> you fool. Uh, performance, I mean, they're both pretty switched on. I mean, this this is nuts, this thing in some ways, you know. Yeah, yeah. If you look at it, I think it's an old World War One airplane engine. Yeah. But it's not, it's quite strong. 145 horsepower or thereabouts, you know. You've got to remember as well, and I keep going back to old sports bikes, that yeah. is my background, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the GSX-R1000 mm. coming out in 2001. Yeah. Everyone going, this K1. thing is mental. Mental. This is mental, 144 horsepower. It's insane. 144 horsepower that yeah. was. And now we've got that from a, now they're in a skanky old duck bike. Thing that looks like a tractor, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, I really like the engine in this. I think it's amazing, it's very strong. Uh, the electronic suspension is good. Great exhaust note, about. sorry button, but great yeah. exhaust note on this bike. Yeah, yeah, no, it sounds good, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. And uh, the brakes, it's got new brakes for this year, which are by Hayes, which yeah. I've never heard of. They're a leader you, in mountain bikes, actually, you, for yeah, a long you, time ago. Yeah, not so much now, but they were a huge player in the yeah, yeah. mountain bike market. Yeah, yeah. The, the KTM has got Brembo's, which is, as we'd expect, they're, they're both great, you know, yeah, both, both are good. Brilliantly. Yeah, so perfectly prefer looking brakes. One strength, asset strength, strength asset. One thing, a good thing that BMW has, is millions of accessories. Yeah. They've got a big book or a big website full of stuff you can bought on. I'm pretty sure KTM have the same thing, don't they? They do, don't they? Yeah. Don't they have the big orange book or something, whatever they power, call it. Power, power wear. Parts, power yeah. parts, power parts. Power parts, power wear, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so both bikes, you know, can be tricked up to the nines with extra nonsense. Yeah. Red anodized bolts. And Everything. I mean, good I think, stuff. I think Luggage. Both, both of them have, have hit onto the fact that people um, want their bike to be their bike. They don't want just a, a another, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, GS or another. You yeah. Know. yeah, there's making it better, yeah. and then there's making it yours, individual customization, yeah, exactly. if you yeah. like. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and making it suit the purpose you want it for. If you're riding into town a lot, you might want, I don't know, a sat nav, or you might want, yeah. you know, certain bits and pieces, luggage. smaller, smaller little luggage bags, or bigger luggage if you're doing bigger distances. And yeah. I think you know you can get pretty much anything you want to fit these. Yeah, but both are prepared for panniers and, yeah, and totally. a top box. It's just slots so, straight on. Yeah, yeah. Really good. Hmm. Really I, good. I do love a top box, Rob. I love a top box. They're good things, aren't they? They are, yeah. Well, why top would you box. not want a top box? No, exactly. Anyone that says otherwise is a fool! So there's lots of gassing going on here, Rob. But we need to come to the point. Yeah. Which is which is the best. Which oh I see I said I said you're a KTM man. I agree with you in lots of ways. This is a a hilarious piece of nonsense motorbike. Feels sharper, feels, you know, more uh, aggressive. Uh, ha so, so, yeah, so, so it's faster, it handles better, mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. more capable off road. Lighter. Sure, yeah, that yeah. makes it the winner. I'm not very, I'm not very good off road, so I don't care about that. Okay. But, um, a bike like this, I like it. I like to go on and think I could, right now, right this, two minutes from now, I could be on the road and I could go to Glasgow or I could go to Nice or I could just go. I prefer to go to Nice, but anyway. You? <laughs> Not Glasgow. You know what I mean, but you know what I mean. It's, it's like this. This machine will look after me and it will take me wherever I need to go. Yeah. I th that that bike would do it, and I would feel quite happy doing it. But I think this bike would do that a bit more effectively. It's, it's got shaft drive. Yeah. And, and I, mean, I know I, it's, I shaft drive is a terrible it's... dull thing, but you know if you're going to go and do epic mileage then you don't want to be thinking about leaving your chain oh, and all the rest of it yeah. so especially if you're going Fit somewhere Scott a bit. Oiler, oh. yeah I, no I, I do agree yeah, yeah, yeah. i do agree to an extent um, so the shaft drive is good yeah that's really good the yeah. presence on the road i mean you come up behind somebody on this with the, with the fog lights blaring and all that people almost crash getting out your way don't they yeah which we don't want to happen. No, no, that's a... But it's, it's just, they're, 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 well, they're, they're in the world of their own, aren't they? They're always dawdling through it's a, yeah, Beyonce's I think it's, I think back to be, album. To be honest, I think either of these bikes... Back are, album, are, back catalogue. I was going to say they're an unusual thing to see in your mirrors, but these are so... We <laughs> saw so many, didn't we, while we yeah, were riding? Yeah, we just yeah. Just loads of them. So, yeah. you know, there's me saying, well, this one's the better bike, but this one is the one that seems to be selling, and whether mm. that's because of Ewan and Charlie or... Yeah. The reputation this bike's built up quite deservedly from yeah, being yeah. reliable and, yeah, yeah. and all the rest of it. Mm. I'm not sure, but I, I don't know. I, I just think if it was me, I'd go for the KTM. Yeah, and if it was me, I think I would. Uh, there's not much, and I, I would be totally happy with riding that. Yeah, you know, every day. And the, the bad side of me probably would want to ride that a bit more, but just for the, for this type of bike, I think I would pick the BMW and put all the the gadgetry on it, and then ride to. Glasgow and Nice. <laughs> Just those two destinations. Munching no, Toblerones. No, nowhere else. No. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so you're the KTM man in orange, I'm the BMW man in blue. I don't know if I'd, I wouldn't have it in blue, I'd have another colour I think. 
Yeah, I don't think that's the best colour. No. I like some of the sort of like the black or the titanium, something like that, so it's quite good. I'd have to see other colours. Yeah, yeah, totally. Could you, you, <laughs> you think it would be disgusting if you got one painted up in Tyco replica colours? <laughs> that would be quite cool. <laughs> I think that colour is a Make little bit... Make it so beautiful. It's a little bit Rover 200, isn't it, that blue? It's just, you know... It's, what are you saying about the Rover 200? Or, or it could be a bit Subaru blue, <laughs> I don't know, it depends on your perspective. <laughs> if you want an adventure bike to do medium adventuring on, but mostly roads on... Yeah, I mean, you would... You'd, but either, the, either of these are great. They are, and, and mm. I think what's worth mentioning as well is that, you know, you might argue, well, why, why not get a touring bike? Hmm. Well, these you are know, touring bikes. But they are touring bikes, exactly yeah. that. Mm. But they've got the capability when the roads get really, really crappy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they are in Surrey, <laughs> <laughs> actually. Um, you know, you can soften everything off all the suspension without getting any screwdrivers out. You just press a button. Bink. And all of a sudden, you've got this bike that will suck everything up. Really mm -hmm. comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, go any it's a proper go-anywhere bike, mm -hmm. as long as there's no mud. Because <laughs> um, with these road tyres, you would be a bit stuck. But or sand. You yeah, really want to sand. No. Or snow. Yeah. Or. But any metalled road you'd be fine. Barbed wire, yeah. fences. You'd, you'd, you'd be, yeah. Jagged. <laughs> dragon's teeth tank traps. Yeah. Okay. Massive ditches. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just said metalled roads out. So any, okay. any metalled road, whatever the state, this will do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, uh, the, the obvious, uh, as you say, they're both twin cylinder engines. They're both making, you know, within 20, 25 horsepower each other. The weight's going to, in the ballpark, of that is lighter. Um, I think a lot of it's down to. The BMW chassis, the sort of telelever front, the swing arm at the front, and then the, yeah. the sort of fox sliders, and then the paralever shaft drive at the back. You know, I think 15, 20 years ago when they started making the GS, those things were kind of essential to make it work. Yeah, almost. no, I, I think so. I mean, it's... Whereas now you almost think if you put a set of normal forks in, it gave it a proper frame, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I maybe, don't know. maybe when it was developed, you know, they, they weren't forks weren't available that worked properly for such a massive heavy bike the mm. right length of travel or whatever so they developed their own yeah. um, telelever front end which does still work quite well I mean you know you hit a bump cranked over on that mm -hmm. it doesn't ever feel like the front's going to do anything bad does it, it no. it's not like it goes clunk and yeah. goes yeah, over yeah. it yeah, yeah. Um, but it does feel it does still feel clunky it doesn't yeah. feel flush and smooth like, like this does mm -hmm. you know this has got you know WP suspension yeah it's nice uh, which is developed from you know Dakar and stuff like that you mm -hmm. know so it's kind of mm -hmm. Yeah, it's come from the right mm. place and mm. obviously it's adjustable so you can make it as, as firm or as soft as you want pretty much yeah but it just does feel really good quality whereas mm. i don't want to say the bmw doesn't feel good quality you know mm. it does what it's supposed to do it just feels a bit more agricultural to me yeah i i think you know they've stuck to their guns with us and uh, they've developed it to a point where it's really good yeah but if they would put that effort into a fork it would be better because yeah. that fork is fundamentally more dynamic than... And there's less of it, it's yeah. less heavy. Yeah, yeah. So you've got a ton of weight over the mm. front, which you probably don't really need. Yeah. And then you've got a lot of weight at the back, which, mm. you know, it does actually make it quite sure-footed because of that weight does kind of, it mm. does feel pretty much nailed to the road, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, even in the wet, it feels mm. really safe. Mm. So it does feel super safe. Yeah. This just feels more exciting. So I guess it's kind of... So swings around about, It really yeah. is swings around about, mm -hmm. so yeah, exactly that. Uh, I wouldn't like to say whether this is more or less reliable than that, mm. um, but I think this the BMW would probably be obviously a lot less maintenance, yeah, um, or a bit less maintenance. But this is definitely the bike I'd go for. Still, it's just a, for yeah. me, it's it's just a lot more fun. Yeah, and that's why I ride a motorbike out. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I suppose the, the other angle is if you are going to go and do some adventures around the world, there are probably more BMW dealers than KTM dealers yeah, generally. Yeah, something so worth thinking about. If you if you need a crankshaft sensor in the middle of Mongolia. Mongolia again. We just go to... Um, the Mongolian BMW crankshaft you to, you sensor. You'd go against motorcycles, wouldn't you? Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beat your way through the hordes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, adventures, orange adventures, blue adventures. We, we like having them on these bikes. At the start of this test, we, we did kind of describe these as, as kind of middle class machines. And, uh, oh, I'm not, I'm not sure at the end of it. I mean, you need you need to be a bit middle class to be able to afford to buy them, obviously, because yeah. they're, you know, sort of 14, 15 grand. Yeah. Once you start adding on the, the accessories, which, which you must You're going to get carried away with the parts catalogue yeah, when yeah, you yeah. see it, because you're going to want it. So yeah, yeah. if you're spending 14 grand, you might as well spend 16, haven't you? Yeah. So uh, middle class price, and certainly. I think 
you'd be a bit of a middle class hooligan if you went for this. It makes yeah. you want to be a bit naughty. Yeah, you, yeah. Know? you sort of have to rein your behaviour in a little bit. <laughs> um, Whereas this is, um, it's not middle of the road. It's not midlife crisis, but you know, it's a bit, it's the sensible middle class option, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it's the, it's the, but it's, you can go nuts on it it's as well. It's maybe the lower risk option. They're both super fast bikes, mm. both a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but they are kind of, you know, a little bit chalk and cheese in, in a few ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, best way really is to get to your local dealer and have a go. Have Simply a go. one you prefer. Check it out. Definitely. And that's it from us on Keep Britain Biking. Keep Britain Biking.